Konnichiwa, my name is Cassie Stevens, and I'm here to chat with you today about how I use thematic units in the art room. But before we get into all that, let me set the scene for you a little bit. I teach 400 kindergarten through fourth grade students in a town just south of Nashville called Franklin, Tennessee. I see my students for about a half an hour at a time every six days. So that's the real reason I like to focus and dig deep about one culture. I barely have any time to spend with my students, so optimizing it by just focusing on one thing really helps me explain those different cultures to the kids. One thing that I love to do is incorporate all of the senses when I'm teaching the children. So I like to begin at the very beginning of the school year incorporating the sense of sight. So I usually come in about a week early and I spend some time painting this large bank of windows that I have in my room. This is easy and cheap, something fun that you could do. And I simply use the same temper paint that the kids use for their artwork. If you don't have time to do something like that, why not make a project where the kids actually paint on the windows. Another way to incorporate the sense of sight is having large pieces like this beautiful tree that I got from a store in the town where I live. Another thing that you can do to incorporate sight is to simply send out an email to fellow teachers asking them if they happen to have any souvenirs from the place or the culture that you're going to be studying. This came from one aide at my school who'd been to Egypt, and as you can see, it's painted on actual papyrus, and she gifted this to me for me to share with the kids. Another thing that you could do is you could stop by your local thrift store. These pieces right here were both found at the thrift store, and they're so much fun for the kids to see and actually hold very carefully so that they can get a sense of what that culture looks like and feels like. My favorite thing to do, though, is to actually create pieces on my own. This kind of gives me the opportunity to be an artist so that I can spend some time creating things like this to share with the kids. And they love to see the different things that you've created. So once the sense of sight has been established in the art room, the other thing I love to do is dress in costume. And hotep now. So this is exactly how I greeted my students on the first day back to school when we were learning about ancient Egypt. I really wanted to get them excited with this crazy looking sight that they would have before them. Another thing I shared with them was this mysterious diary that I'd received over the summer, which as you can see was simply a small book that I'd wrapped in burlap with a string and inside I'd written out different stories and tales of some mysterious person who'd kept this diary in ancient Egypt. This really captured the imagination of the kids and got them very excited about what we were learning about that year. Once the sense of sight has been established, then I like to incorporate the sense of sound. So an easy way to do that would be just to simply play some music from the culture that you'll be studying. CDs like these can be found pretty inexpensively at your local bookstore. The other thing I like to do is introduce the children to the sound of the language that the people speak. So. These Count Your Way books are fantastic because they introduce children to not only great facts about the culture, but also how to count. I like to teach them how to count, how to say hello and goodbye. That's how we greet each other when we enter and exit in the art room. And then I also like to teach them how to say please and thank you because I don't feel like we say that often enough. So one way to, another way to introduce the language are these great CDs. They have songs on them. They're very simple. And next thing you know, the kids are singing along and speaking in another language. Last year, when I introduced French to the kids, we w received a mysterious red piece of luggage to the art room. So when I popped it open in front of the kids, we were all surprised to find that there was a French poodle inside the box. And this French poodle introduced us to a little bit of the French language. Oh, uh -huh, bonjour, boys and girls. Now, I don't know how comfortable you are using puppets in your art room, but I have to tell you, the kids absolutely love it, and they'll totally eat it up. All right. Au revoir, Fifi. Au revoir. <laughs> Science experiments are a fun thing to do with the kids when you're learning about a different culture. When we were chatting about Egypt, we mummified an apple. When we learned about the Statue of Liberty, we patinaed some copper. And when we were learning about Scotland, we dyed some of our yarn with Kool-Aid. Check Pinterest for different ideas for science experiments with the kids. 
this is great because not only are you talking about science when you're learning about a culture, you're talking about geography. Incorporate the music, get together with your music teacher and find some musical instruments from that culture. And there's also literature. The Dropping In series by Pam Stevens is excellent. Mike Venezia is getting to know the world's greatest artists. And then this year's new favorite with my fourth grade students are the Choose Your Own Adventure series. After you've gotten the sense of sight and sound established in the art room, then you can start to work on the sense of smell and taste. So smell's a little bit tricky. One thing that I like to do is just simply plug in one of these. Doesn't really give us an idea what it smells like in that country, but at least it gets rid of that bizarre smell that keeps coming from your sink. So this is a great thing to do. And another way to introduce taste is to give the kids a little bit of a treat from that culture. So last year, when we were learning about Great Britain, we had tea and biscuits. Of course, we had to have gluten-free biscuits for those children that are allergic to the gluten. And then this year, we actually had a student whose mom prepared a huge tray of sushi for us. Now, I know that's not always possible, so simply showing the kids menus or even visuals of what the food might look like is very exciting for them. Now, I know what you're thinking. This all sounds like a whole lot of fun, but what kind of art projects are you actually going to do? Well, I've added several links to this to my blog that will show you different projects we've done over the past couple of years based on these different cultures. One of the most successful things I've done that have really helped the kids connect with these other cultures is introduce them to Jess. Our school mascot is a tiger, and Jess is actually the initials of our school. I sent Jess on several different adventures to friends that live at other places around the globe, and those folks took pictures of Jess in front of the Eiffel Tower at a pub having some tea and biscuits, well actually out of the U.S. having tea and biscuits, and other different places. He even traveled to Iceland. The kids love seeing pictures of Jess in these other countries, and it really piques their interest about them. Jess also had a passport, and this was fun to explain to the kids about how a passport works, which brings me to our first project. So at the beginning of the school year, each child was to create a passport. This was first grade all the way up to fourth grade. We created a passport. I got this stamp from Etsy. It's actually for a wedding. And on the inside, it looks just like a passport. I added a photo of the children. They had to write about themselves in here. And then every time we traveled to a country, they were to go to the passport station and stamp their passport. These are picked up at a local craft store. And for their passport, they, of course, had to have a suitcase. All students created one of these portfolio suitcases. And as you can see, it's a piece of construction paper that's been folded in half, handles attached. A pocket was created for their passport and a luggage tag. Every time we learned about a new place, we were to add a travel sticker to showcase the place where we traveled to. Now, if you're concerned about the kids getting a little bit too excited in the art room when you're introducing these things, I like to bring a burst of excitement and then bring the kids back down a little bit so we can really talk in depth about what we're learning about. So one way to kind of bring them back down is an activity called palming. Palming is simply having the children rub their hands together slowly until their hands start to heat up a little bit. Sometimes I have them rub a little bit faster. This heats up their hands. When I say three, they'll stop and they'll cover their hands with the palm, their eyes with the palms of their hands, and they'll leave their hands on their eyes while I talk to them very calmly about what we're going to do when we take our hands off of our eyes. And when we do, we're a lot more calm. We can look at the glow. We can talk a little bit more in depth about the art project and the culture that we'll be learning about. Now, if all this seems a little bit crazy and overwhelming to you, don't worry. Remember, you've got the whole year to cover this. Also, send out emails to parents and teachers. Get their help so that your load will be a little bit lighter. Also, save some of those surprises. You don't want to spring all this stuff on the kids at once. This way, you can attack the school year like the true Viking art teacher that you are. Please be sure to check all the different links and feel free to email me if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.